something a bit different this week and do watch the end of this video because there's a special guest appearance and some advice of where to or what sort of maples to buy and what not to buy hello again maple lovers so Carl here um, doing something that perhaps those who view the channel or subscribe very kindly um, and seen lots of my videos will be quite surprised by because these are Japanese maple seedlings. So how did I get hold of these? Well, someone uh, who runs the, one of the nurseries I visit very kindly gave me um, a little handful of them. So just to explain, this is Acer palmatum palmatum, a sort of generic Acer, and they would produce literally thousands of these as rootstock. That is to say they're growing on for a few years, maybe three, four years. And then a cutting's taken off a Acer cultivar. So there's some cultivars in the background there, which again, you know, some will know and love. So perhaps I'll take that Kotonuito there or Shishigashira, cut a sort of branch or a scion, a small piece off it, and then cut a slot into one of these once they're older and graft the two plants together. I'll possibly do something more on that at a, a later date, but that's why you can see, I'll just come over here to show you. It's very clear on the Shishigashira that we have a, a graft point just there. So the top part is the Shishigashira cultivar and the bottom is obviously a much more mature rootstock which is what I've got as a seedlings over there, really. So it may seem to something like a strange process, but again, you can see on this Cotonuito, sort of similar principle. Why, why do this? Well, the advantage to the um, end user is that because the top of this tree, so the Shishigashira, for example, has been cut off another one, it is an exact genetic copy of Shushigashira. So in this way, this tree found many, many years ago can be preserved in its integrity. So as a buyer, if you buy a grafted tree, you know exactly what you're going to get. In the same way, this is Shana, which was actually originally found blowing, growing on a, a blood good in the USA. So this was taken um, as a kind of mutant branch almost off that blood good and then cultivated repeatedly over and over again onto more rootstocks. So this is genetically the same as the original tree found in the 1980s. So it's a kind of way of, of making sure that the buyer knows what they're going to get, the leaf shape, the leaf form. You can probably see the little, here we've got the middle node is actually kind of rounded off as well. That's a classic sort of genetic defect which has been carried forward through many, many, many years as they've been cloned basically. But this will be a Shana. It will be slowish growing. It'll be fairly dwarf. Um, it'll be a very compact in habit, just as you see it here really. So again, you, you know what you're getting as opposed to this, which if it kept the seedlings from this, which we could actually sort of breed with another tree, um, would eventually go back to being um, a generic Acer palmatum, I suppose, really, after several generations. So it's a bit like with, um, with animals. If you buy a, a Labrador, it's bred with other Labradors to maintain the genetics of a Labrador, really. Um, but in, in similar ways, what the, the roots of the tree might not be quite so sturdy or so healthy. So another advantage of using rootstocks is that you're going to get a really good disease resistant tree that, uh, that has a great rootstock and the top of the tree, which is the interesting bit that you're buying, um, is maintained over different suppliers and, and different generations, really. In fact, I have one down um, here which I'll show you very quickly. We'll take a little garden tour. So this is Okashimo, which again has a very different look to it, a different style to it. Really like this little tree actually. Hard to find, strangely, because it's been kicking around since 
about 1810, I think it was first recorded. So, sorry, 1710, so it's 300 years old in terms of the cultivar that was originally found. And this is one that they can trace back because it's been well documented. So the way they've done that, obviously, is again, just taking the cuttings off the trees and then grafting it onto um, a really good rootstock. So this will be the majority of my plants. So if you're new to the channel, this is how it works, Trombus Red Sentinel, particular characteristics that are, are definitely maintained. So back up here, again, just, just looking again, these are not genetically the same, they are sort of crossbred the way that most things do really, male and female sort of aspects to it. And we've got lots and lots of genetic variation and let's be fair, if there wasn't this genetic variation, then the cultivars that we know and love would never have been accidentally formed in the first place. So, a bit of fun. Um, these are kind of cheapest trips to buy, actually. You, some, some places will sell you these very, very cheaply. Or well, in fact, you could gather seeds from trees that you find and germinate them and sort of create your own. The chances of finding a really good cultivar that's going to get taken on and is really fantastic though is, is pretty low. So Bartholomew's down in Dorset where I buy quite a few of my plants. In all the time, I think 30, 40 years they've been in business, they've found about 10 that are really interesting and worthwhile keeping. But again, they are the, the source of all the modern cultivars that we know and love. So what I'm going to do today is, I'm just going to have a play with these really. Um, I've got some sort of a few random pots. I'm going to thin them out. Um, we'll put some into pots over here and we'll do a, a tray full of them as well. I don't, I don't know why, but I've got them spare, so we might as well use them up, really. And in here, we've got my sort of classic mixture of half sort of mature plant compost and half, um, as they call it, ericaceous, ericaceous compost, which is basically acidic. And this is sort of quite light and quite fibrous, really, which is good because I think it's going to drain pretty well. I have made the mistake of buying some of this and it's quite clay, it's quite heavy, it's quite, it's too rich, really, where well, this is a pretty good mixture. And the idea of this mixture, really, is that the mature compost gives it some weight. So when it's in its pot, it's going to not blow over all the time. The ericaceous compost gives it some acidity which Japanese maples love and by using the right size pot the right drainage so all these pots have got holes in I'll give this a little rinse out for a start actually why not you can if you want use some alcohol or something to to sanitize it but I think we'll just give that a rinse out um, and then in that way that you've got good drainage and a good mix to give them a head start really so that, this is what I use to put at the bottom. You can use broken pots and stuff like that, but I tend to use this, which is just landscape fabric, to be honest with you. It's, it's quite soft, it's like material. And that will just stop the soil falling out the bottom and uh, provide some, it just, it just holds the water back, I think, while the compost gets saturated. So we're gonna watch if we have another wet sort of season like we did in March to, to make sure that's okay. Um, but over the years, this has stood me in fairly, fairly good stead, really. So that's what I'll probably uh, continue at the moment. You could, if you wanted to, put some um, extra compounds in here to make it drain even better. And I think when you buy these um, actual in technical pots, little plastic pots from the growers, then they put it in a very, very fast draining compost and water it like every day. So it's just a compromise, really. Um, I'm not in that position, I'm not there every day watering the plant, so if I don't get water for a couple of days because we go away or we're on holiday or something like that, I need something that's going to retain moisture a little bit more. But you don't want too much moisture because that's going to root the rots. Root the rots? Rot the roots and cause a problem too. So what I'm doing here is, I've just got this pot here um, with a few seedlings in. 
giving it a gentle tug but there's a bit of resistance so I've just been round a little bit with this bit of a stick or something go around the edges and just loosen things up a little bit what I don't want is to damage the roots too much so it just seems sensible to me to um, just tease them out a, a touch really and make loosen things up and as you can see we're just starting to sort of everything's starting to move really which is good so pot prepared here giving it a little quick rinse out and what we'll do we'll half fill that with some compost mixture and this is you know a bit over potted it's a bit large really but as i said i'm just using up some pots at the end of the day but i'm going to pick a fairly substantial one here and then lift that out gently a little, little tweak and a shake and just easing it out and that's got quite a decent uh, little bit of root on it actually so not being too fussy we'll just locate that kind of in the middle um, I think actually what I'll do because we don't want to get the stem of the plant too wet and this is again I'm being honest this is an oversized pot really for this so we'll just pop that to one side And just pretty much as I would with any other tree, I suppose. Offer it a bit more compost, firm it down a little bit, not too much. And what we're aiming for is to have the sort of where the stem meets the root system about level with this at the top of the this little ridge here in the top. So that's always a good marker with a pot because it just helps to. We, we need a bit of space at the top to sort of get water in there too make that work really so I just need to sort of pause the video there a little bit um, sadly I haven't got uh, three pairs of hands which would always be useful for this sort of thing but there we can see uh, we've got the little fella in there this, this is kind of new territory to me I'm used to dealing with more mature older plants but here we go it's all about experimentation learning from experience that's what the channel's about I suppose so that's one down and uh, several more several more to go really. I think it's always good to prepare plenty of compost to be honest with you because you know that can always go back in a bag it's, a, it's mixed up now so I'll just use that as a mix for, for more projects if I need to. And also noting that I think it's mid July I think I might should get away with this because this compost will definitely have nutrients in it and we're kind of uh, in a sense overfeeding them a little bit but Aces tend to go through a bit of a growth spurt at this time of year anyway, and then they, the compost tends to sort of get leached out or used up within about three months. So hopefully that will be the situation before um, kind of September. And because they're little, I'm always in, in a position to kind of look after them a little bit. I could bring them inside the conservatory and give them some frost protection if necessary. So on that basis, we'll see how we, uh, how we progress. So just continuing with this little exercise, I've actually, uh, the ones that I chose, and just to say that of the bundle I was given, this is probably two thirds of them or something like that. Um, there's one that didn't take at all, it was just ruined, there's no leaves on it, just a stick really, so that one's got discarded. But, you know, uh, of, for a freebie, this is, uh, this is working out quite well. So just carrying on down here, we've got this fella. I'm just showing you what I'm really doing is, is half filling the pot up, this little technical pot I to have saved from somewhere else, and then just lay it straight on the top really, having teased out and as best I can. And then from there we can just we can just go around with some compost really. And then stand him up. Probably easy to do with two hands. But yeah, that's working quite well. Um, I'm not going to firm this down too much. I mean, I'm not trying to sort of squish everything down excessively to, and compact it all. Far from it. I want it to drain sort of quite well. And also on top of that, um, I'm kind of looking. I won't put any mulch on the top. I'll, I'll keep an eye on these and water them more often if necessary, rather than trying to mulch them and keep the moisture in so much. 
I think if we can give it sort of a, I think they've earned the right, they've survived, they're, they're doing okay. I think they've earned a little bit of TLC now, really. There we go, I need to be too fussy, I don't think, really. So I'll give those a good water in a second, and I'll just continue and uh, put these three into this trough. Same principle, really. So we're, there we are, that little task finished. Plenty of compost left over as well for, for the next project, which is always good. And here we are, a bit of an experiment, trying different pots, different pot sizes, three in a row, why not? Just a note though that um, you can see, and I've seen this ad in supermarkets or garden centres, very small trees that look ridiculously cheap and they'll profess to be Katsu or Orange Dream or, or some such name cultivar. In fact, they're not really they're sort of related to that because they've they were collected from a roundabouts that tree but they're not actually grafted so it's a it's a bit of false advertising really and a bit naughty um they may do very well they they really could but on the other hand because they are a particular cultivar like the ones over the back there on on their own root stocks they may or may not do so well so by grafting them you definitely get what you pay for it will cost you more money but you'll definitely get what you pay for um the ace will be sort of a known entity and the disease tolerance the how good the roots are will be based on one of these which are kind of very durable so that's my advice really either go for seed things like these why not um because actually they'll probably do very well because they're not sort of over specialized like some of the maples are. On the other hand, go for cultivars if you want certainty of what you're going to get. And here's Oscar. And he, as you can see, is a bit of a mixture. But he's very happy and very healthy, healthy so just shows you. It doesn't uh, doesn't have to be a cultivar to uh, to make a very successful um, little creature really so take care and we'll see you soon so I really hope you're enjoying the content of these videos if you are if you could like and subscribe to the channel that'd be fantastic and please hit the notification bell as well because that way you'll know when I upload more I'm really really pleased with how things have progressed and this little channel sort of growing quite nicely really so thanks for all those that subscribed already and a special thanks to all those that ask questions or you know have ideas and please let me know if you want any more different content because we can do that and I hope to see you soon in another video. Cheers.